Hi, we're Group 14 and we're going to be discussing tube hydroforming and robotic MIG welding and how they are used in the production of bicycle frames. Hydroforming is the process of using fluid under pressure to alter the shape of a ductile material. Tube hydroforming is the most common form of hydroforming and is used to change the usual round cross section of metal tubes. Usually, tube hydroforming starts with a straight round tube. Before the hydroforming begins, the tube is bent to match the desired shape. The tube is then placed into the die. Fluid is pushed into the tube at a high pressure while the metal is forced into shape. Finally, the fluid is drained, and in the case of bicycle frames, the parts are welded together. There are three main forms of tube hydroforming. Low pressure, high pressure, and pressure sequence. In low pressure hydroforming, pressures below 12,000 psi are commonly used. This typically means that the process is faster, but requires the part to be carefully designed in order to form properly. In this process, the tube is slightly pressured while the die is being closed around it, forcing it into the desired shape. High pressure hydroforming generally uses pressures exceeding 20,000 psi and can reach pressures as high as 100,000 psi. In this variation, two unformed tubes called blanks are placed within a die. The die is then closed entirely and the tube is filled with high pressure liquid, causing the blanks to expand to completely fill the die. The thickness of the material may vary throughout the part, causing material properties to play an important role in this type of process. This is the process generally used in bicycle hydroforming. Mechanical shaping and welding are also common options when manufacturing bicycle frames, but the shape of the tube from its beginning to its end is almost always the same and can hardly be changed using these traditional methods. With tube hydroforming, the shape of the frame on the bicycle can vary considerably from the beginning to the end. For instance, the frame can have a rounded shape at the upper end of the tube and a flat shape at the lower end of the tube, which connects with the wheels, allowing for greater vibration absorption. This is sometimes achieved by using a series of molds in a process called multi-step hydroforming. Tube hydroforming allows significant gains in strength and reductions in weight at an increase in cost. The final process variation commonly seen is pressure sequence hydroforming. In this version, the die is partially closed and filled with low pressure fluid. The die is then closed completely with a low pressure fluid resisting compression. High pressure fluid is then forced into the tube, causing it to expand to completely fill the die. This process allows the use of lower pressures and produces a part with uniform wall thickness. Hydroforming is only cost effective if done on a large scale, where the part being created requires a large amount of labor, material, and equipment, which is therefore most commonly seen in the automotive and aerospace industries. In the case of bicycle frames, it provides added performance but increases cost when compared to traditional methods. When these conditions are met, however, cycle times can be reduced to increase production efficiency, allowing for an improved bottom line. The process can also decrease the waste, secondary operations, weight, and part number for a product. Although different cross-sectional blanks can be used in tube hydroforming, circular or tube-like shapes are the most common. This is also true with respect to the final hydroformed part. As can be seen with the bicycle frame, the parts are usually tube-like with extrusions or variations in specific locations. Additionally, although tube hydroforming has improved in the 25 years since its creation, highly complex parts are usually created through other methods. Tubular hydroforming is commonly used to produce parts in the aerospace industry, which can require tolerances of around 75 millimeters. It is also known to produce parts with less springback than sheet hydroforming, making it ideal for a wide variety of applications. Tube hydroforming is used primarily to shape ductile metals. In the case of bicycle frames, this is almost always aluminum. The material used should exhibit good fatigue properties, high energy absorption, acceptable corrosion resistance when coated, and excellent coating properties, making stainless steels, aluminum, copper, and copper alloys common choices. The secondary process that we researched was MIG welding, which involves continuously feeding a wire toward a heated tip. This results in the joining of components that are held together by the deposits from the wire. Along with the wire, a shielding gas is passed through a welding gun to protect the newly formed joint from contamination. This process can be done manually or with the help of a machine, as in robotic MIG welding. In the case of the bicycle frame, the tube hydroformed pieces are welded together to complete the product. MIG welding involves heavy startup costs, but results in reduced labor costs and safety concerns and increased overall efficiency time. 
It can also conserve materials and reduce the amount of overwelding that occurs with manual processes. MIG welding can be performed on any weldable material, including the ones used in tubular hydroforming. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for your time.